How are we doing, guys? Welcome to the player ratings. Arsenal against Newcastle. And I'm still annoyed at VAR. So, of course, this is the player ratings. Arsenal nil, Newcastle nil. And yes, I am still very, very annoyed at VAR. Now, there were two incidents in particular. Mikel Arteta has already spoke about them and he said that both of them were stonewall penalties. What I will say about the one in injury time is that if you're going by the current letter of the law with the handball rule and some of the penalties that you've seen given for handball this season, then that is a clear penalty. It's as simple as that. Um, but what I will say is that if you are on the receiving end of one of those, you will feel a little bit aggrieved. And I think that Mikel Arteta himself would say if that was given against us in the last seconds of the game, he would feel annoyed about it too. Um, so that one, it's down to interpretation. It's also down to the current rules. And, you know, if you think the rules are stupid, then the people that are to blame are the ones that make the rules. And it's as simple as that. But the one... A little bit earlier on in the game, the foul on Gabriel, the pull of the shirt by Dan Byrne. It is a stonewall penalty. There's absolutely nobody in any way can tell me that that is not a penalty. People are saying, oh, it was only a slight tug. What are you going on about? A slight tug. The clearest indication as to see how much of a pull this was is the sponsor on the front of the shirt, the Fly Emirates, which is right in the middle of the shirt. If you go and have a look at the pool, the Fly Emirates was here on his shoulder. His shirt was nearly off his back. That's not a slight tug. That's not part and parcel of the game. That's not something that happens all the time. That is a clear penalty. Now, I'm not going to blame the referee in this instance because when you get those situations in the box where it's all contested, he's looking at a million and one things. It's very, very easy to not see something like that. But this is why we have VAR. It's a clear and obvious error by the referee because he's not seen it. So VAR have to step in and say, you've missed something there. Go and have a look at the monitor and see for yourself. The referee would have gone to the monitor, seen it, awarded the penalty. It's as simple as that. VAR would have worked perfectly and there would be no issues at all. But why was he not told to go and look? Who was the actual VAR official? Scandalous. And it's as simple as that. In terms of the game itself, I think that in the opening 10 minutes, Newcastle tried to go toe to toe with Arsenal and they realised very quickly that they would get absolutely annihilated if they went toe-to-toe -to -toe with us. Um, we could have scored two or three goals in that opening 10 minutes. And I thought, what a great start this was. Um, Bukayo Saka absolutely tore Dan Burn a new one. And after that, they went, whoa, no chance. Every time Saka got the ball, there was two free men around him every single time. Same on the other side with Martinelli. I didn't think he had the best of games. But a lot of it was because he was being nullified. Two free man every single time. Um, we had a few chances. But overall, it kind of, you know, made us realise that we need that strength in depth. We need that bit of an option to come off the bench and a bit of variety, a bit of change, something different. And we did not have that in this game. So, listen, it's a point. It's a clean sheet. We move eight clear. Um... And it is what it is. At the end of the day, don't have a meltdown. Don't get angry about it. We're, we're flying at the moment. And if you would have told any Arsenal fan in the opening 17 games of the season that you'd be sitting there top of the league, eight points clear. Um, you would have won 14, drawn two and only lost one. You would have took that all day long, wouldn't you? So anyway, let's go and get into the player rating. Starting off on goal, Aaron Ramsdale. Again, I'm... Um, I'm not too sure about Ramsdale at the moment. Some shaky moments. He seems to take forever to kick the ball out. And there was one moment where he nearly got caught on dwelling on the ball. And um, it could have cost us. Um, didn't really have a lot to do, to be honest with you, in terms of the actual goalkeeping. It was just a lot of the ball at his feet and distribution. Something he's normally good at, but it wasn't that great. For me, I'll give him a six. 
Uh, defensively, first of all, Ben White, solid performance. Um, can't really say much more than that. Seven. Uh, moving into the centre-back positions, William Saliba, um, much better than the last couple of performances. Um, and he's got through another game without a yellow card because he's on four, obviously, and I was explaining that on one of my other videos. So he won't be suspended for the Spurs game now, which is good. Um, but he gets a seven for his performance. Um, Gabriel, I thought he was absolutely immense. I think that since we've come back from the World Cup, he's been immense. Um, he was solid. Absolutely superb performance all round. And should have, of course, um, had that penalty. Um, but yeah, he gets an eight for me. Um, next up, we have um, Sinchenko. Superb. Oh, mate, he is absolutely immense. I thought he was really, really good. Probably between him and um, Gabriel for man of the match, to be honest with you. Um, and I kind of think, you know, it's down to personal preference who you'd have as your man of the match. Um, for me, I just thought Gabriel was superb. Um, Sinchenko, he was superb. Argument eight as well. Um, but yeah, I think once he's there, you can see what he offers. And especially when he came inside and he went into that kind of midfield role. Um, so, so good. Um, but yeah, he gets an eight for me. Uh, moving into the midfield area, Thomas Partey. Um, same as always, breaks up the play, does everything, tries to build and start the attacks and everything else. Solid performance all round. He got seven for me. Um, Granite Xhaka, another solid performance. Got a little bit further forward in the final third. Of course, it was him that had the cross for the handball incident at the end. Um, solid performance all round. Seven for me. Um, attacking areas. Uh, Bukayo Saka, first of all. Um, constant threat. Constant, constant threat. Very, very, um, you know, easy to see what Newcastle were trying to do. And they had to go 2-3 man on him every single time. Um, I thought he'd done all right. He done all right. Um, tried really hard. A couple of moments he could have done a bit better with a cross in, but overall decent enough. He gets a seven. Uh, Martin Odegaard. He was superb in the last couple of games, but I felt he had an off night. To be honest with you, um, everything that he was trying just didn't seem to work. His shooting wasn't great. He had one of those early chances in the first five minutes, and he probably should have scored or at least hit the target. Um, but I thought it was a bit below par for Martin Odegaard's standards. So for me, he gets a six. Um, next to him, Gabriel Martinelli. Poor game for me. Um, I think that it was not easy for him because he was affected by the doubling up, just like Saka was. But I don't think he was as involved or as key as Saka in certain moments. Um, so he gets a six for me. Um, Eddie Nketiah. I don't think he had a bad game, to be honest with you. I think this is the kind of game that was crying out for a Gabriel Jesus um, but Eddie really, really, really worked his, his nuts off for this game. And I thought he really, really um, put a shift in. And it was really difficult for him. He got a few half chances. There was one in the second half where he made the space. Good shot, good save. Very unlucky. Um, but yeah, I don't think he had a bad performance at all. I think he gets a seven for me. Um, in terms of the substitution, there was only one. And I'm not really going to mark that because he wasn't on long enough. Um... But yeah, that was kind of what we're going with with the strength and depth. Not enough for me because uh, we only made that one substitution. Mikel Arteta, he gets a seven. He done everything that he could do, really. Um, didn't really want to change anything more. Not bring on Marquinhos or, or Vieira. And obviously just didn't feel they were right for the game. And, you know, this is why we need to strengthen. And um, I see a lot of people talking about Mikel Arteta and his antics on the touchline and everything else. What I'll say to that, right, is that when Ferguson was doing it, Everyone loved it. When Pep Guardiola and Jurgen Klopp does it, it's passion. Yes, that's what you want your manager to be. The moment Mikel Arteta does it, oh, what's he doing? Sit down, be quiet. What do you want him to do? Be robots. Behave yourself, man. Let him go out there. I love my manager being like that. And what? Let him out there. Show that passion. Let it transpire to the fans and the players and everything else. Carry on doing what you're doing, Mikel Arteta. Um, but yeah, in terms of the referee absolutely all day long a zero. Zero, 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 zero. He was absolutely pathetic. Awful referee. Never want to see him at the Emirates again. Couldn't control the game. Was booking players that shouldn't have been booked and then not booking players that should have been booked. Pathetic. Absolute standard of refereeing in this country is abysmal. 
Five minutes injury time. Are you mad? Newcastle done the exact same thing against Liverpool earlier on in the season. And what happened? The referee turned around and went, all right, you want to play them games? Ten minutes injury time. Ten minutes. And Liverpool scored right at the end of that. They got what they deserved. You get this game. I'm looking at it. I'm thinking there must be about eight or nine in this. Because it was ridiculous. And he puts off five. Five. Are you mad? No. Nah. Pathetic. So, listen, that is it for the player ratings. Um, as usual, let me know in the comment section what you think, if you agree or disagree. Um, we are next up on Monday for the FA Cup game. Uh, there'll be the preview to that. There'll be a watch along, um, player ratings, all the usual stuff. And then we get ready for the North London derby against Spurs. And that is one that I cannot wait for. So if you're new around here, hit the subscribe button, smash a like on this video, and I will see you lot soon. I'm out.